so we start with unit 1 introduction to control systems engineering and mathematical model so before I dive into talking about this subject in a traditional manner let us first try to have uh, a basic overview of what the subject is about and we'll try to uh, learn the importance of this subject by certain applications examples uh, uh, there will be some examples that I will be putting forward so in fact this is a, a subject that students find very interesting and the condition is that you keep on following this subject with punctuality and attention so the first thing that comes in mind is that what is what do we mean by the term control so it means that uh, there must be some variables which are given in a process which are required to be controlled and the example th this th these variables may include from the control of simple processes like temperature in air conditioner or refrigerator to complex processes like launch of a space shuttle so there will be multiple variables which will be controlled depending upon what the problem in hand we have and the complexity of the problem is so control engineering plays a key role in automation So in fact what I am going to discuss here will not be something that is going to be asked to you in the examination but for the sake of uh, understanding what this subject is all about. So let us suppose that let's say we or you are working in a chemical manufacturing plant as an engineer where you require to manufacture a chemical X and in order to manufacture this chemical X you require mixing of two chemicals A and B now whenever you desire to manufacture anything there are certain parameters which are required to be maintained along with some other parameters for example if you want to manufacture chemical x so it's not going to be only mixing of chemical a and b straightforward so you must be re re requiring certain more parameters for example you must know what ratio of chemical a and b should be mixed in order to obtain the required or desired chemical so it's not that you can you can randomly mix chemical a and b to obtain chemical x so there must be a ratio of mixing of chemical a and b so let's say we are going to mix the chemical a and b in a ratio 1 is to 2 then there are more parameters which may be required to be maintained to a set point value uh, in order to manufacture chemical x for example it may be temperature or pressure or ph value so for the given example let's say that these are the four parameters which are required for chemical x to be manufactured let's say the temperature is to be maintained at 70 degrees celsius the pressure at 10 atmospheric pressure the ph at 6. so in fact manufacturing of any chemical in a chemical manufacturing plant will require certain parameters to have uh, desired value or set point values for example here we are talking about four such parameters one is one of which is ratio the second is temperature the third is pressure and the fourth is pH so now in order to obtain chemical X so you require these four parameters to have the the given set point values or the given values in case if any of these values are not maintained so if somehow you fail to acquire let's say temperature to 70 degrees celsius while the process of mixing was being done and the temperature deviated from 70 to 80 degrees celsius or let's say ph was not maintained at 6 rather it was maintained to some value close to 8 so if any of these parameters deviate or the ratio let's say the ratio of mixing deviated from 1 is to 2 that is 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 so if any of these parameters are going to deviate from the set point value or the desired values then what you are going to get is not chemical X rather tons of garbage because you are talking about manufacturing of chemical in a plant in a chemical manufacturing plant where the chemical must be manufactured at a very vast scale at a very large amount so it's not manufacturing of chemical in, in, in a lab where you will be using test tubes rather you will be using large chambers you, you, you must be using large uh, tanks in order to manufacture this chemical so in case if you are not capable of or you are not able to do, uh, maintain any of these parameters like ratio temperature pressure pH to their desired values then what you are going to get is not X 
not chemical x rather garbage so now uh, one thing that comes in mind is that in order to let's say control so since we are talking about control so we want our manufacturing plant to have certain sort of control of these parameters the ratio temperature pressure ph but in fact whenever you talk about control so before the process of control the first thing that comes into picture or the first thing that must be present is to sense so this can be understood for example uh, if i give you an example of humans so if if suppose that you want to know that whether the water inside a bucket is warm or co cold so uh, the hotness or coldness of water by uh, without using sensors so it can be judged simply by uh, submerging your if you immerse your hand inside the bucket of water so you can conclude that the water is either cold or hot whatever the condition of water is so what basically are you doing is you're sensing so this is what we normally do when we require to automate a process or we want a process to be learned uh, to to be operated in an automatic manner so the first thing is that you will always require to have sensors so by the way how many sensors do you do we people have do humans have how many sensors are there five yes what are they then so uh, your skin becomes a one sensor then you have your ears the second sensor the tongue your third sensor then you have eyes eyes are capable of uh, looking or seeing th objects and the fifth sensor is your nose yes the smell the sense of smell so these are the basic five sensors that human body employs in order to control their environment so one thing is that whenever you have a process to be controlled so one way is that you deploy humans in order to look into the parameters but there are limited parameters because human have five sensors which means that humans are capable of sensing only five things like temperature or smell or taste or sound so or visions so these are the basic sensors that human have and any process that employs such type of parameters that humans are capable of sensing can be controlled by humans but to a limited extent for instance if suppose you you you, you have a colder environment and you want to take a bath and now you start heating the water so th there is a limit that you want that water to be heated up because beyond that limit you cannot bear the temperature of water while taking bath so in order to check whether the water is heated to a, a correct amount or comfortable to take a bath then what you do is you immerse your hand in the bucket that is how you sense but the limitation is that you cannot tell the value of the temperature of that particular water so you don't have a numerical value so this is where the instruments come into picture the sensors come into pictures so instrument in fact will tell you the sensors will in fact tell you the numerical value of the quantities they are going to measure for example let's say we have a thermometer so thermometer will give you exact reading exact numerical value of the temperature of the object that is being sensed likewise for pressure you will be having certain sensors like bellows diaphragm and gauges so you have Uh, such type of sensors which will be providing you a numerical value so humans have a limitation that they are capable of se sensing uh, things but they, uh, you you cannot tell about the numerical values of things that are being sensed by humans so now sub in this example we have uh, two sensors which are installed at the inlet where chemical a and b enters so in fact these are the sensors uh, so how are you going to maintain ratio of a and b to 1 uh, is to 2 so how how are you going to maintain the ratio of a is uh, the chemical a and b to 0.5 how will you ensure this
so how are you going to make you going to ensure that the chemical b is twice of a let me give you an example let's say you're working in, in the kitchen and you want to uh, let's say add sugar to a glass of juice or a cup of tea so if you are quite precise you have a weighing scale and uh, you say that you are going to add 5 gram of sugar to 200 ml of juice so in that case you one way is that you take the spoon and you know that the spoon is going to measure uh, around 4.5 or 5 or 5.5 grams but if you are trying to be precise because i am talking about an example here of manufacturing of chemical where the pre precision of mixing should be very high so it means that uh, for a precise measurement you will require certain sensors so in in your kitchen if you're going to measure 5 gram of sugar you will require a weighing scale and you will put sugar on that weighing scale measure the weight of the sugar then mix in into the water or juice whatever you're going to prepare so this is one way so in uh, one way is that you're going to mix chemical a let's say 1 kg then you're going to weigh chemical b a uh, 2 kg then you mix it so it's not feasible because you are going to manufacture chemical in a very large quantity so if you want to weight the chamber so the size of chamber is too much so you cannot um, uh, make a measurement on the basis of weight what else good yes this is what the sensors uh, we, uh, what uh, we, uh, i have shown they are the in fact the flow meters so they are going to control the flow of chemical a and b so if suppose that the flow meter which is employed at the side of chemical a allows chemical a to flow by quantity x so if you are going to have let's say on the sensor at the chemical a side displayed as x then it is important that on the sensors at chemical b side there should be on the display two times of x in order for chemical a and b to mix uh, at a ratio of 1 is to 2 so flow meters are going to ensure that the flow the required flow is maintained so you you are going to keep the flow of chemical b twice that of a this is how you are going to maintain the ratio of their mixing 1 is to 2 and accordingly if you want to change the ratio then you will have to change the flow and the flow meter will be displaying the the amount or the ratio Uh, the chemical will be flowing inside the chamber sure sure smell uh, nowadays there are smart sensors coming into pictures now in order to main, uh, to measure the temperature of the inside of the chamber you will require a thermometer then in order to measure the pressure you have gauges the pressure gauges or uh, you might have seen such things in in the labs or the uh, the industries then likewise we have sensors for measuring ph called as ph sensors so in order to maintain these four parameters you will require sensors four different sensors that will be sensing each of these parameters and using these sensors you will be able to judge whether the process is going under uh, control or not so i was talking about control so before control the first step is that you are capable of sensing the parameters or not so if you are capable of sensing it you have sensors that are capable of sensing these parameters then you can easily control them and in case if there are not sensors which are capable of sensing as just we talk about example of the sensors of taste taste sensor if they don't don't exist till date then they you, you cannot control the process of uh, preparing food to a desired taste because you don't have sensors likewise we don't have sensors that can measure the degree of cleanliness of cloth or how much clothes are clean and that is why you you cannot have a washing machine that is perfect up to date so you may you if you are going to put clothes in in the washing machine it is possible that in one cycle the washing machine may not have uh, cleaned the clothes to a desired extent so that is only just after looking into the clothes so the in order to control any process 
the conclusion is in order to control any process you will first require sensors that are capable of sensing the parameters which is to be controlled now suppose uh, there is okay any process that you're going to control will have certain uh, band we call it as tolerance band for example in our previous example of chemical manufacturing we had ratio 0.5 so we are going to adhere to the mixing of chemical a and b to 0.5 but it's not possible to perfectly adhere to 0.5 so you might have a deviation from 0.5 it is possible that the mixing uh, would have been taking uh, to a value 0.51 or 0.52 or 0.48 so there must be a permissible limit we call it as tolerance band so here in in the graph we have shown the vertical axis versus time so we'll see that uh, there exists a tolerance band for example in case of ratio graph so you see that 0.5 is desirable but 0.49 and 0.51 are the limits which means that if you're going to mix chemical a and b so this mixing ratio should not go below 0.549 or it should not go beyond 0.51 and this particular band we term it as tolerance band likewise we must have a tolerance band in, in temperature so here we have shown that the temperature is that is permissible is from 68 degree to 72 degree celsius likewise for pressure we allow pressure to vary from 9 to 11 then for ph we can al we, we allow ph to change from 5.9 to 6.1 so this g gives rise to tolerance band and tolerance band is the limit where uh, you will require your variables to uh, be there within uh, within those limits so suppose that your process su suppose that your pro yes sure the desirable temperature for keeping insulin or vaccine or such medicines is 2 to 8 degrees celsius so 2 to 8 means this is the tolerance band so if you're going to come to a temperature below 2 let's say 0 degree so it may be possible that the insulin or the vaccine uh, potential will fa uh, drop and likewise if you're going to go beyond 8 degrees celsius so it may be possible the vaccine or the insulin may become ineffective so this 2 to 8 degrees celsius is what it's the tolerance band the limit where we can allow the uh, medicines to be kept at so you you will never have a very precise temperature like le let's say someone says that my medicine is capable is only uh, uh, capable of bearing four degrees celsius so if you're going to go beyond four or less than four then this medicine will become ineffective so you will always avoid such medicines so you will allow you, you will al always try to buy medicines which have certain tolerance band likewise things follows for different process for example the process that we just talked about chemical of man uh, the manufacturing of chemical x so here we will be having certain tolerance band for each parameters as shown in this figure so let's say we allow the process to uh, work and then so this is the way the variables changed so we, s we we can see into this figure that the green waves the waveform shown in green are the admissible variables and those sh shown in red so the part of the waveform that is shown in red is something that was not desired which means that from the point from the starting to uh, the end of the green line the things were going all all right but as soon as the limits were crossed the tolerance band were crossed so now what you god was not chemical x rather garbage so this is where the control of the process is required you always want your control system to keep your pro the parameters par parameters which are being controlled to certain limits of tolerance or within the tolerance band so as soon as these parameters go beyond those tolerance bands so things are going to get wasted so is that clear So, uh, for example, in this case, ratio, I have told you that the ratio of mixing will be measured by flow meters, but there must be a valve that 
uh, will be controlling the speed of flow of chemical A and B. So that valve again will be uh, controlled by actuators or motors. So there, there is a closed loop mechanism that operates the system. Likewise, if you talk about temperature, so we have a thermometer here or any other sensor. So using those sensors, what we do is we measure the temperature and as soon as it as the temperature, let's say deviate, let's say the temperature drop below 70 degrees Celsius to let's say 68 degree. Now there must be a mechanism of heating this chamber. So this heating of the chamber will be controlled by certain mechanism which will be having this sensor in its closed loop so there must be a feedback that that should be given to that actuator or the stuff that will be causing the chamber to heat up i'll be talking few more examples so that things would be more clear so uh, long ago when there was uh, there were no sensors available so you have many sensors coming into pictures and uh, within last dec few decades you have many sensors which were not available let's say a century ago so if you talk about a century ago so you had processes that were being controlled manually for example if i talk about a ic manufacturing company which manufactures let's say not ic so let's uh, make it more easy for example, I talk about a biscuit manufacturing company. So a biscuit manufacturing company that manufactures, let's say, 10,000 packets of biscuit daily. So previously, what we had was things were being done manually. And there was there were humans who were counting the number of packets being manufactured daily. So once they counted to 10,000, the process was stopped. And, and they came next day in order to... Uh, repeat this process again but nowadays you have counters that will employ sensors so the sensors will be sensing the number of packets so they will be counting at one two three so you have automatic counters or counter that are based on computers so here is where you don't require counting manually so in this figure i have shown that there is a human operator that is going to uh, control the flow of fluid so the fluid that enters through this pipe is being controlled by a valve and this valve is manually being controlled by the operator and this operator is looking into the meter that measures the level of the fluid or it may be temperature of the fluid whatever is being controlled so it's, it's controlling the flu fluid flow which means that if the level is going to rise beyond certain preset value then the operator will uh, close the or uh, will move the wall in such a may way to restrict the flow so this is a manual control of the process but in industries nowadays we don't have manual control things are being done automatically so normally the process that is being controlled we may talk about heating cooling lifting mixing breaking steering etc whatever process you want to control so that could be included in the process or plant and this is being controlled by a controller and this controller is can be an open loop or a closed loop set. so this is something that we will be discussing in the next lecture now this is one more example of an air conditioner or a refrigerator in fact this uh, figure shows the schematic of refrigerator but the same thing applies to air conditioner as well so in, in, if you look into the back side of your refrigerator you'll find things like this so in fact you'll be seeing condenser there at the back and at the bottom of the fridge at the back side you'll observe a compressor so the difference basic difference between refrigeration and air conditioning is in the uh, the in the coolant the, the refrigerant so in fact uh, the type of refrigerant that you will be using in the refrigerator will be different from that of air conditioner. So what happens inside the refrigerator is, let's say you first brought the refrigerator from the market and brought it to your home, you connected it, uh, you turn on the refrigerator. So what happens is, once you turn on the refrigerator, the compressor, compressor starts to operate and it allows the refrigerant to flow inside the a compartment of the refrigerator and 
take away the heat from the compartment from inside the refrigerator so once the refrigerant that flows inside the compartment of the refrigerator it absorbs the heat from it and this heat is then released at the back side of the refrigerator and that this is why you feel hot when you stand at the back side of the refrigerator or close to the refrigerator or at the back side of the air conditioner so you will feel feel hot air because the refrigerator or the air conditioner is taking away the heat from inside the compartment or the room and is releasing at the back side so when you connect this refrigerator which was initially at a let's say the temperature of the compartment was initially 25 close to 25 degrees celsius or 30 degrees celsius so once you connected the compartment the refrigerator to the supply the compartment temperature will start dropping from 30 and let's say the desired temperature of the ref refrigerator is 0 degree so in fact you have different values of temperature within the uh, within inside the compartment of the refrigerator varying from minus 5 or minus 8 degree to plus 4 or plus 5 or plus 8 degree so if you talk about the uh, the the part where you keep frozen item so the, the temperature should be close to minus 10 minus 20 degree and the rack in which you keep the vegetables or fruits so the temperature should be close to 5 degree or 10 degree so you have a variable temperature within the compartment of the refrigerator but for the time being let us consider that on an average the temperature of the refrigerator is 0 degree so when you connected the fridge you had the temperature of the compartment as 30 degree and it, it started dropping the compressor started working and the temperature inside the compartment dropped then what you observe is that the temperature drops to a value close to zero as shown in this figure now what is happening since I told you that refrigerator is a automatic control device uh, uh, air conditioner is also an automatically controlled device so what happened is there is a mechanism that is going to control the operation of the compressor so once the temperature of the compartment drops close to zero degree celsius then this mechanism comes into picture the sensor senses the temperature and it gives the signal to an actuating device which tells the compressor to stop so uh, this is the point where the compressor stops so when the compressor stops the temperature inside the compartment of the fridge will start rising again so it will rise to a certain value where this will be sensed by the sensor again and this sensor will command the actuator to turn on the compressor again so this is the point where the compressor will turn on again and the temperature will again start or the cooling will start again and will go to a value a minimum value close to zero then this process will move on as shown in figure in a cyclic manner so you will observe a cycle this is what you hear when you close when you stand stand close to the refrigerator so you will hear sound of on and off so the fridge and the ac they keep on turning on and off and on and off in a cyclic manner so th this is how you maintain the temperature inside the compartment or the room so i guess this is clear to all huh. Uh, what type of temperature sensor do you employ in refrigerators, ACs or geysers? What do you call it? Thermostat. So you, 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 some of you people must have seen this thermostat. It looks something like this. So especially in case of geysers, it requires change within few years. So yeah, this is the thermostat which is shown in, in the figure below at the bottom. So thermostat in fact employs a thermocouple sorry not a thermocouple it's a, a bimetallic strip a thermostat so we have a bimetallic strip thermostat which is shown in this figure on the left side so a bimetallic strip as the name suggests comprises of two metal metallic strips which are attached together rigidly and they have different thermal of coefficient coefficient of thermal expansion are different for uh, the two materials for example 
we have used here a brass and inverse steel so what happens when you attach or you join two metals of different coefficients of thermal expansion is that whenever temperature changes let's say in this example if suppose that the th coefficient of thermal expansion of invar steel is more than brass so as soon as the temperature increases in that case the expansion in invar steel will take more compared to brass so the expansion in invar steel will happen more but they are rigidly joined and that is why instead of having elongation in the invar steel a bending will start because the brass will restrict the elongation in the invar steel in result it will cause bending in the strip and this process is employed in order to control or switch on and off the thermal processes so i guess this is clear kaise so for example if you want if you say that s represents the switch so whenever you have increase in the temperature so this strip will bend downward and the switch will open so where are you going to employ this process in refrigerator or in geysers you want your switch to open when temperature rises in geyser yes this part uh, this particular arrangement is for geysers or heating devices so let me uh, explain this more yes this is an on off controller based on temperature because what happens is when temperature rises you have bending in this strip and this will cause the switch to open you have opening no contact is being created so you can say that this switch will be connected to let's say an ac supply which will uh, in alternately be connected to a heating coil and the other terminal of this heating coil will be connected to this strip so whenever whenever you have low temperatures the circuit will be complete the heating will take place in this coil and the temperature will rise and then you define a set, certain set point so for example in case of geyser let's say you have 38 degree celsius as set point so once the temperature reaches 38 degree celsius this bending will start and will allow the switch to open and thus no current will flow through the heating coil and the process will stop the process of heating will stop is that clear you sure this th yes yeah, the this cyclic process causes an effect on efficiency and that is why nowadays you might have heard about inverter acs inverter devices so inverter air conditioner so what they do is they have avoided the design of inverter acs as such in such a manner that they avoid the cyclic behavior of the uh, variable that actually took place in old acs because this cyclic behavior causes uh, drop in efficiency so if you somehow are going to maintain this temperature at steady values which is what actually happens in uh, the inverter acs then you have more efficient acs and likewise other uh, inverter based devices like inverter fridges is that clear now my question to you is if suppose that the same arrangement if you go if you if you desire to have bimetallic thermostat installed for cooling purpose let's say refrigerator then what change in arrangement should be followed for refrigerator good so there are two options either you reverse the switch you you put the switch downward or you can reverse the strip and again there must be a calibration for this done so calibration for heating will be different from calibration of cooling 
and that is why if you if you people some of you have seen the thermostat then you must have seen this particular uh, knob this is a knob so using a screwdriver you usually change the orientation of the knob so this is what we term as calibration so this is manual calibration if suppose that your geyser is not heating properly or is not heating as uh, much as you uh, were desiring and in that case you will have to rotate this knob in order for the geyser to heat more likewise if you uh, let's say geyser started heating more than what was desired then in that case you will be uh, rotating the knob in the opposite direction in order to allow heating to drop so is that clear